Hi there and welcome. Have you ever looked at early and later pictures of the airship R100 and thought that one was different from another? Well, you wouldn't be wrong. It's because the R100 had two different sterns or tails. Our story begins back in 1925 when the R100 had originally been designed by the legendary designer Barnes Wallace for a very sleek and aerodynamically efficient hull. This concluded with a very angular and lightweight pointed stern. The ship was constructed with this and her original length was 709.5 feet long. On completion, the R100 flew down from her constructional base in Howden in Yorkshire in December 1929 to her operational home at the Royal Airship Works in Cardington in Bedfordshire. You can see from these early pictures that the ship had a very sharp and pointed tail which gave her a really sleek and aerodynamic look. The R100 then took a series of Air Ministry scheduled trial flights, often with MPs and Air Force officers on board. It was during one of these trial flights, which was a 23-hour flight on the 22nd and 23rd of May 1930, and this included a top speed trial run where the R100 reached a speed of 81 miles an hour, the fastest airship at the time. As the R100 was preparing to moor at the mast, the officers were very surprised to receive a wireless message from the Cardington base saying, I suppose you know that your tail is buckled. The officers knew nothing of the sort, as the stern of the airship was over 400 feet behind the control car, and there are no crews stationed in the tail. What had happened was that the air pressures around the hull had built up, and the 17-foot lightly built streamlined tip had collapsed. The whole fairing behind the last frame had buckled. It was thought that this was done during the 10-minute full speed test which the airship had recently completed. This pressure point had shown up using a small scale model in wind tunnel tests, but it was dismissed as what was thought then as what they call a scale anomaly. The R100 landed safely at Cardington Mast in gusty winds, showers and sunshine, and then, when the weather allowed, was carefully let down to the ground and walked into the shed by 400 personnel from nearby RAF Halton. On inspection in the shed, the conical section of light alloy tubes which did not contain a gas bag was found to have buckled, and there was a discussion on how best to repair it. At this point, the R100 had been taken over by the government under the Royal Airship Works, and it was decided that the Royal Airship Works design team and engineers would replace the buckled tubes with a more rounded stern, and thus shortening the length of the airship by some 15 feet to 695 feet. The Deputy Chief Engineer Neville Shute Norway, who had helped build the R100 at Howden, had said that this detracted from the streamlined shape of the ship and changed its beautiful, originally designed sleek looks. This is why you see pictures of the R100 with both pointed and a round stern. In July and August of 1930, when the R100 flew to Saint Hubert Aerodrome near Montreal and Canada and back, she was photographed by thousands of people. This is why there are many pictures of the airship with a rounded stern. So what do you think? Which one do you prefer? The R100 is indeed a ship with two tails.